Call Patricia Messenger with your comment now. 1850 333 103. This is Cork Today on C103. Now last week, members of Skibbereen Town Council voted unanimously to support a motion calling for the immediate cessation of water fluoridation. The motion was proposed by Fine Gael Councillor Brendan McCarthy, uh, who joins me uh, uh, for now on the programme. Good morning to you, Brendan. Good morning, Patricia. You're welcome to the programme. Now every local authority sets the level of fluoride in drinking water. Now I know it is within uh, a set range, but does an individual local authority have the power to stop fluoridation? No, well, the answer to my motion on Thursday night, which um, was, as you say, calling for the immediate cessation of the practice of fluoridation of the public water supply, was that local authorities in Skibbereen and Clannagilty in every part of the country are governed by law that they have to add the fluoridation. It's not fluoride, it's, kind of, it's, it's scary stuff really. Um, it's a fluorosilicic acid is what is being added. Um, for our health is what we've been told and it's been a practice that's been happening for 50 years ish in Ireland in different parts um, it's not up to each local authority as to can they stop it or can they not so I asked in the motion at the end that it be circulated for support from all town and county councils in the country and also it was sent to the ministers with most responsibility I suppose the minister for local government Bill Hogan the minister for health James Riley and also to the Taoiseach himself Are you the first council to do it? We're not the first couple, like, um, we've been contacted by, like, uh, Declan Waller and Skibbereen. Who's Who we're going to be speaking with in a, in a moment. An expert on the issue, and another council did, it did come up from a different council, but not in as much detail, not as worded. And my own background, I've always been, and this has been in my head, kind of, just to get the time to do something about it. I attended a conference there last month, and that was the issue, and... On my return back to Skibbereen, I was thinking to myself, you know, there's facts and figures, just a few of them if I could. Um, firstly, that it's not fluoride, which, you know, we all learned in school, there's fluoride added to water to make it make our teeth healthier and stuff. It's actually a very dangerous acid, and if any person comes in contact with the acid that's added, it's extremely dangerous to them, and, you know, it's a devastating effect. There's 98% of Europe do not do this process anymore. Many of parts of Europe did, but they've ceased the practice. Countries like Holland and Belgium and Switzerland have all banned it or stopped it in the last six years. We are more or less the 2% that's left that's doing it. There's a few uh, densely populated centres in the UK that still do it as well. If um, one of the side effects of it, and there are many side effects, and you know, we're given the other answer from the experts, um, the Irish expert body on fluoride and health who say that, look, it's proven to be good for your health and it's best practice that we do it. Yes, my main my main question is why, if there's any doubt about its safety, why are we still doing it? It should be stopped. If there's any doubt at all about anything, anything that research has shown that can be harmful to you, why continue? Why continue? Especially, okay. and the other thing, that if 98% of Europe don't do it, and we're so governed by Europe in so many ways that, you know, we can't do this or that or that because Europe said not to do it or we have to ask Europe first. And yes, the whole of Europe is not doing this and we still And we still are. Just, okay, let, let, me bring in, let me bring in Declan Wall, who you mentioned from Skibbereen, who's a fine mentalist. Uh, and a real expert on this subject. Good morning to you, Declan. Hi, uh, and you've been, uh, not too bad, you've been campaigning for, for, quite, for quite some time. Just outline, in, in, in as layman terms as you possibly can, why you feel we should, be, we should not be doing fluoridation. Um, well, it's very simple. It's like this. Um, the World Health Organization have repeatedly stated over the last number of decades in their drinking water guidelines that before any country commences a water fluoridation program that the authorities should undertake a detailed assessment of what the dietary intake of fluoride is from various subgroups in the population including infants uh, and sensitive subgroups such as people with thyroid disorders or diabetes or who work in environments where they would be consuming lots of water so the first thing is, as a parent myself, um, in other countries outside of, outside of Europe that may still fluoridate, uh, and there's only a few, they would advise parents to be aware of the dietary fluoride intake of their children, especially if they're feeding them formula milk made up with fluoridated tap water. 
which they've advised parents not to do in the United States and Canada. Um, as a parent in Ireland, no parent knows what the dietary intake of their child is with regard to fluoride. They don't even know what their own dietary intake of fluoride is because fluoride is not, the concentration of fluoride in foodstuffs and beverages is not provided in Ireland. So if I, if I ask you a question, do you know what your fluoride dietary intake is? Not a clue. Okay. Not so a clue. That would be the case with everybody in this country. Uh, and a simple example would be, uh, how many cups of tea would you drink in a day? <laughs> Way too many, 10 plus. You would drink 10 cups of tea in a day? Yeah, between, t- between tea and coffee, yeah, at least 10. So uh, there is about up to five and more milligrams of fluoride in a litre of tea. So there's four cups in a litre of tea. So you would be consuming about 10 milligrams of fluoride a day, every day, if you're drinking that much tea, okay? Yeah. Now, the optimal level of fluoride that is regarded as uh, as safe um, with regard to prevention of dental caries is 3.5. Well, and what effect is it having on our health? So, so the thing is that what we have in Ireland is that we have a population who are already high risk with regard to the fact that they have a high dietary exposure to fluoride and we're adding fluoride chemical to our drinking water which we're then making beverages like tea with and we're making uh, we're cooking our food in it we're washing our uh, uh, um, uh, ourselves in it showering and bathing in it we're having glasses of water we're having glasses of water so what is what it's doing is it's acting as a tipping point for the population in ireland and tipping them over what would be regarded as the safe level of fluoride exposure now the national academies of science and medicine in the united states of whom i'm in touch with a number of of their senior members stated in a report in 2006 that a high-risk country with regard to fluoride exposure would be the UK because of their consumption of tea. Now, we drink more tea than the UK. Yeah. And we have fluoridated water, and the UK, by and large, does about 10% of the UK. So, I mean, the, the, to consider that from a risk management point of view, which is one of the areas that I work in, that no dietary assessment of the of the of the exposure of the Irish population to fluoride was ever even undertaken before we commenced this project uh, in the 1960s is really astonishing. Now there are many many sources of fluoride uh, in your diet. Um, you know, I mean, like there, there's over 200 pharmaceutical drugs that would have fluoride as a constituent product in it, and. The European Food Safety Authority noted in a report they did in 2006 when they looked at fluoride exposure of infants, they found that up to 75% of the dietary intake of a child can come from pharmaceutical drugs alone, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And that an infant who lives in a fluoridated country of which we're the only one in Europe that has a policy mandating that everybody must consume fluoride, that they would be absorbing, because the baby's very small, as you can imagine, and their organs are very small, uh, they would be intaking 180% more fluoride than an adult, uh, above what would be regarded as the optimal safe level for an adult. Okay, so if all the scientific research is there, and if a number of European countries, the bulk of European countries, have decided to end fluoridation of water, why are we still doing it? What's the argument that's been put forward? Uh, I don't understand in Ireland what we have. A, we have an organisation that are non-elected, and they're, that, that they're a body of individuals who have been pr- promoting fluoridation for forty years, and maybe. Maybe it gets down to a very simple thing at the end of the day. It's ego in the context of uh, that they're, you know, they're refusing to accept that they were wrong. At the end of the day... Do you, do you believe it's as simple as that? 
Well, at the end of the day, every scientific body, uh, credible scientific body in the world, including the European Commission's own scientific committees in the United States, have said that it's the topical application of fluoride through toothpaste on your teeth that prevents dental caries, okay? Yeah. It's the same as... Michael, the, the obvious question is, do we all have much better teeth because of it? Uh, no. The problem is, is that if you have an overexposure to fluoride in your diet, it damages your teeth. Oh. So, in Ireland, we have about 40% of the population have what they call is dental fluorosis, and uh, that is a visible sign of, like, white, flecky spot, spots in your teeth of chronic overexposure to fluoride. And a lot of Irish people have that. We have the highest incidence of, of dental fluorosis in Europe. And that's directly, li that's, you can directly that's point directly to fluoridation of water. That's directly yeah. linked to it. And okay. we also have the worst dental health in Europe, uh, it, within the European 15 states and the European 27 states. So the Irish expert body say, who are, who are by the way, principally dentists. Uh, they're not oncologists. They're not pediatricians. They're not uh, toxicologists. They say that uh, um, water fluoridation is the single most effective means for preventing dental caries. Well, if it's the single most effective means of preventing dental caries, why is dental health in Ireland worse than any other country in Europe? And the issue is not about teeth here. The issue is about the health of the body. Now, the, wa the chemicals that we're adding to our water supply have been identified by the National Academies in America and in a recent journal on, on endocrine function, which is to do with the, the, the likes of the thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, and all of those glands that we have in our body, identified water fluoridation chemicals as low-dose endocrine disruptors, okay? Mm. That means that they affect the thyroid gland, they can affect the ovaries, the test, the, 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 the testes in men, the thyroid, parathyroid glands, the heart, the kidneys, the adrenaline glands, and... This is serious stuff. In the serious most stuff. Report, okay. I've, done, oh, oh. I've examined the incidence of those diseases in Ireland, and I've compared them with non-fluoridated Northern Ireland, yeah. and I've compared them with mainland Europe, and I've compared them with international countries. And the results? And the results are absolutely staggering. They're, they're beyond belief, and the results are coming from official published reports. So if you look at diabetes, for instance, w when you look at, at the moment, the fact that we are under enormous pressure with financial management in this country, and the health service are cutting budgets right across the board, 10% of the HSE's budget, budget addresses treating diabetes in Ireland, okay? Mm. The incidence of diabetes in the south of Ireland is 60% higher than in Northern Ireland. We're spending 1.8 billion a year treating diabetes in Ireland. And in a recent study just published last year by the VHI, they examined 11,000 adults in Ireland who had no previous diagnosis of diabetes and found that 11% of adults in Ireland had diabetes who were not confirmed with it previously. We have one of the highest incidences of diabetes in the world. And what the... What yeah, but, 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 but won't they point to the, the direct link to uh, rising levels of obesity? Yes, but what, this, is the, this is the issue. A low-dose endocrine disrupting chemical like what we're putting in our water what they have found is that it inhibits insulin synthesis in the body and it prevents glucose metabolism and both of those issues are linked to obesity and diabetes directly. Okay. They're also right, linked to cardiovascular disease and the, you know, and they're also linked to, to endocrine cancer, okay. so for instance. Okay, I want, I want to bring in, cause, and because she's been holding for quite some time, uh, the Mayor of um, uh, Skibbery, Karen Coakley, who joins me on the other line. Um, Declan, thank you for that, but I just want to bring in Karen, uh, who has been holding. Thank you for holding, uh, Karen. You're welcome to the programme. Um, as, as the Mayor of Skibbery, are you pleased that there was unanimous support for this motion at the meeting? Patricia, before I respond to that, if you don't mind, please, I'd just like to offer my sympathies to all involved in the accident in Skibreen yesterday. Okay. I, it's, yeah. obviously it's impossible to comprehend that such a tragedy and just to say the thoughts and prayers are with all the families at okay. this traumatic time. Okay. 
Thank All you right, um, and, and, and no problem. I, I was going to, I was going to mention that to you, uh, and indeed our sympathies. We're, we're going to be discussing that very sad uh, tragedy uh, in a little while on the program. Uh, but, but back to this fluoridation. Are, are you pleased that there's unanimous support for the motion? Absolutely. Um, Councillor Brendan McCarthy brought it before the council last Thursday, fourth of April. There was unanimous support. Um, I would have to thank Councillor Brendan because he really put it in layman's terms after attending a recent conference. Uh, Brendan had quite a lot of staggering information and I would have to say that there was quite a lot of shock in the council chambers hearing all of this information. It is quite scary, isn't it, when it's laid before you? I mean, Declan Moore has been fantastic and he has been in contact with all of us and there is an awful lot of information out there but what we needed to hear, we needed to hear it in layman's terms and that's what we heard last Thursday night. So it was decided that the motion would be circulated to all councils in the country, to the Minister for Health, Environment, Heritage, Local Government agriculture and also to the Taoiseach. Okay, so, so the idea being, and it could, could actually, the seed of it could start here at Skibbereen Town Council, the idea now being, if you could get every single council around the country to back this same motion, that would be quite a powerful lobby for the government. They'd have to sit Absolutely. up and listen. Absolutely, there is no doubt the way to go is that we would need unanimous support from all councils. I mean, as Declan has mentioned, we've all got family, we all drink water, we're using it every day. Um, a lot of us would consider water to be our best friend. We drink pints of it every day, and then we hear this report. It's absolutely staggering, to say the least. Yeah, and just to bring Declan um, back in, Declan, the last public survey that I could find was, was back in 2002, when 45% of people expressed some concern about fluoridation. Um, and I'm wondering if a survey was conducted today, do you feel that would even be higher? Do you think you know, people are worried about this issue? Well, it was actually in the form for fluoridation report, it was 80% of the, of the respondents said they didn't want fluoride in their water. Wow. And, um, That's high. Like, nobody has asked us as consumers, can we medicate your water supply? And what, what's really deeply alarming is that there are, like, all of the reputable bodies, including the European Union and the United States Academies, have said there are no toxicological studies undertaken to examine the effect of this chemical on humans. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine that? We are putting a chemical in our water supply for which there is no toxicological data to show that it's safe. Incredible. And by just one final word from um, Brendan McCarthy, who uh, we started out with and who actually uh, brought this motion to uh, Skibbereen uh, Town Council. Um, uh, Brendan, are you confident that you can really move forward with this motion? Well, as, as I said, I was, when I was returning to Skibbereen after that conference, I was saying, what can I, as one member of one town council in the country, which town councils are going to be abolished in the next 12 months? So we need action now, and I think look, this is a start, and we started a debate, and the debate, but it's been interesting since last Thursday, you know, through social media and stuff. I've had people from all different parts of the world saying well done and stuff, you know, about this issue. So it's, it's you know, they're kind of flabbergasted as to why in Ireland we're still doing it. If I can just quote the last paragraph from the response we got from the Irish expert body, and they said, fundamentally, the expert body maintains that there continues to be overwhelming evidence that water fluoridation significantly benefits dental health and through this benefits overall health. The expert body is satisfied, having studied current peer-reviewed scientific evidence, that fluoridation causes no ill effects to the health of adults or children, and the recommendations have been implemented to reduce the level in our water supplies and establish standards across all aspects of its delivery will ensure that water fluoridation continues to be a crucial, beneficial healthcare policy. I don't know how any expert group can say that. If you've listened to the last 10 minutes there, to what Declan has said and to what I have been reading, and to what, there's countless and endless reports. And yeah, go on, just go, Google it online. You, exactly. you, you will spend days thing. reading it be, reports. It should be freedom of choice. If there's any doubt, stop it. And like Declan mentioned, that's the ferocious earlier on. That's our teeth. Yeah. That's the only part of the human skeleton that is visible. If it's doing that to the teeth, what's it doing to the rest? Okay. You know, okay. I'm, I'm, I've run way over, but I, I appreciate um, all of you uh, joining us and talks on the program, Brendan. Thank you for that. Uh, thanks for joining us. That is um, Fine Gael, uh, Councillor Brendan McCarthy, also on the line, uh, was Brendan Wall, uh, environmentalist.